This crazy contraption, which looks like it can kill people, it's actually a pantograph. Wouldn't it be cool if I could draw a picture of you, but only make it three times as big? Yeah. Would that mean you'd be three times as ugly? No, three times as handsome. Good answer. Today's cool project made from junk is a pantograph. Now I made this using a pantograph. Hold on, let me go get it. I took a smaller printed picture and enlarged it three times the size. You can make one of these out of scrap wood, thin strips of plywood, or even cardboard. Wooden yardsticks make a great pantograph. In fact, you don't have to measure anything because all the inches are already marked for you. First, I'm gonna show you how I made this three to one ratio pantograph, and then I'm gonna show you how you can adjust it to get other sizes as well. Using a framing square, I'm gonna draw a right triangle with legs of 15 inches each in length. The long horizontal line at the bottom, that's called the hypotenuse. In my case, it's 21 and 3 eighths of an inch long. Since this pantograph is a three to one ratio, I'll divide the length of the hypotenuse by three. 21 and 3 eighths divided by three equals seven and one eighth, which I mark from the left side. I then draw a perpendicular line from the left leg intersecting the seven and one eighth mark on the hypotenuse. I'll then draw another perpendicular line from the line I just drew and intersect it with the right leg of my triangle. Hang in there, the hard part's over. It's almost time to start building. The pantograph I'll be making is twice the size of the triangle I drew. So where I show the 15 inch legs, my legs are gonna be 30 inches, plus I'll add an extra inch at each end for a total of 32 inches. I start assembly by drilling a hole at the one inch mark on two of the yardsticks. Then connect them together using a machine screw and a nut. Keep it snug but loose. So this 10 inch line is where I'm gonna drill the next hole. Since my pantograph is twice as large as the drawing, I'm gonna drill another hole 20 inches away from the top hole. On my third yardstick, I forgot my own rule and failed to double the five inches. So this one, it's trash. Fortunately, I had an extra Lowe's yardstick, which I cut to the proper length of 12 inches. 10 inches for the distance between the holes and an inch overlap on each end. For the next piece, which shows 10 inches, I cut a yardstick 22 inches long and drill the holes 20 inches apart. Connect them together and we're almost done. This angle on the pantograph is called the tracer. It's the part we're gonna use to trace around the original drawing. I'm using a machine screw with a rubber cap. You can also use a pencil, a screw, or even a screw eye works well. At the bottom of the right leg, I drilled a hole slightly smaller than a pencil. It needs to be tight because we're gonna probably need to add some weight to it. The left leg must be secure, so I'm going to use a nail to hold it in place. Now if you're drawing at your dining room table or your kitchen table, I really don't expect you to pound a nail through it, but what you can do is take a nail with a large head, like a roofing nail, and then you can tape it down to your table. Take the end of your pantograph and slide it over, and now it'll stay right there. Now, if you want to use your pantograph as a size reducer, it's really simple. Take your pencil from this position and move it to this position and take your tracer and move it into the right side. Here's the added weight I was mentioning earlier. I'm using a half inch socket over the pencil. If your drawing's too light, you might want to add more weight. And now for this brief intermission. The first pantograph was constructed in 1603 by Christoph Schneider, who used the device to scale and copy diagrams. A sculptor might use a three-dimensional version of a pantograph. Here's a picture of an etching pantograph. And here's a dog panting next to a graph. Anyway, 
back to drawing with a pantograph. Here you can see the completed pantograph in action. It's not precise, so if you're looking for 100% exact duplication, a pantograph is not the way to go. The line it produces is not extremely dark. I'm going to use a marker to darken it in. And now it's time for a little quiz to see how well you've been paying attention. Let's say you want to make a pantograph with a 2 to 1 ratio, which will make an image twice as big or twice as small. I draw a right angle. This time the hypotenuse is 14 and a half inches long. So put a mark along that line at halfway or seven and a quarter inches. Draw in the two perpendicular lines and you've got your measurements now for a two to one pantograph. All right, three to one pantograph. I'll skip ahead to our triangle where we've got a 14 and a half inch hypotenuse. Now if you paid attention in math class, you'll know how to divide fractions. Convert 14 and a half to a fraction which is 29 over 2. To divide that by 3, you've got to multiply by 1 over 3, which is 29 over 6. And 29 divided by 6 equals 4.8. So I'm making a mark 4.8 inches from the left. Now, depending on how exact you want to be, you can approximate this. All right, I'm going to go fast on this next one, but here's a 5 to 1 ratio. So a pantograph is a great tool to reduce or enlarge images. It can be used in stained glass to enlarge a pattern. It can be used in metal, woodworking, leather, art, all kinds of industries. You can use a pantograph whenever you need to make a larger image or a smaller image. Well, thanks for watching Alley Picked. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll be a subscriber. Give this a thumbs up and until next time, I'll meet you in the alley.